covalent lattices. So far we've been looking at the fact that non-metals will make molecules. Non-metals can also form giant 3D lattices. And by lattice I'm talking about this regular shape structure. So similar in lattice form to an ionic bond, but these are non-metals forming these giant three-dimensional lattices. There are no individual discrete molecules. They are these ongoing giant three-dimensional lattices. There's two types of lattice that can form. There's a covalent network lattice. An example of this is diamond or also quartz. Or there's a covalent layer lattice. An example of this is graphite that you'll know in your um, graphite pencils. You often refer to these as lead pencils. They're not, they're now made with graphite. Uh, lead is poisonous, so they no longer make them with lead. So let's look firstly at covalent network lattices. Each carbon atom is covalently bonded to four other carbon atoms. And if you have a look at this model here, you'll see that each of these carbons, so here's a middle carbon, is covalently bonded to four other carbon atoms. That gives it a really, really strong structure and diamond being one of the strongest structures in the world because of these really strong covalent bonds. So the properties of covalent network lattices. They're very hard, again because of these strong covalent bonds. You can see here clearly this one carbon is strongly covalently bonded to four other carbon atoms. These covalent bonds are hard to break, so it makes it a really hard substance. It makes it difficult to scratch and also gives it high melting and boiling points because these bonds are difficult to break. They require very, very high temperatures to break them. They are non-conductors of electricity in both their liquid and solid states. They do not conduct electricity. And the reason for this is that there is no free moving charged particles. Remember to conduct electricity there needs to be charged particles that are able to move. Here all of the electrons are trapped and being shared between these two atoms in these bonds. So there are no free moving charged particles that can conduct electricity. They are very brittle. If you break and you have enough force to break one of these covalent bonds, it will collapse the lattice. And if you think about diamonds, diamonds need to get cut with a laser because they're so hard. However, if it was possible to smash a diamond or if you lasered them in the wrong way, what would happen is it would shatter. It would break into millions of little pieces because it's breaking one covalent bond, it's going to break all of those covalent bonds. Covalent layer lattices are the other type of lattice that non-metals can make with one another. This is covalent bonding in two dimensions only, so just in one plane. These layers, or this two-dimensional plane here, are held together by weaker dispersion forces. And this is an example, which is graphite. So, in between the actual layers, you can see here that these carbon atoms are strongly bonded to one another with covalent bonds. These are very hard to break. These are strong covalent bonds within these layers. However, in between these layers, it is those very weak dispersion forces that are holding these layers together. So very strong covalent bonds within the layers, but between the individual layers, you've got weak dispersion forces holding those layers together. This gives covalent layer lattices their properties. They are good conductors of electricity and the reason for that is because each carbon is bonded to only three other carbons and this means that there's a delocalized electron which can run around these rings. So there's one delocalized electron which means that there is free moving charge and if there's free moving charge particles it can conduct electricity. 
It is the only non-metal that can conduct electricity and that's due to this structure here with one carbon bonding to three others and this one delocalized electron being able to move. It is the only non-metal that can conduct electricity. Graphite also has a metallic sheen. It has a delocalized electron and those delocalized electrons can reflect light. Remember, metals are shiny or lustrous because they have a delocalized electron which reflects light. Well, graphite's the same. The delocalized electron can reflect light. They're black opaque solids with a high melting point and that high melting point is due to those strong covalent bonds within those layers. Graphite is also slippery and this is because these layers can slide past one another. Remember within each of these layers the carbons are joined to one another with strong covalent bonds. These are very hard to break. However, if a force is applied, these weak dispersion forces holding these layers together will break. And that's what means that these layers can slide past one another. So you see that with the graphite in a pencil. When you're drawing a line on a piece of paper, what you're actually doing is you're leaving a layer and then you're leaving another layer. You're breaking the dispersion forces and you're leaving a layer of these covalently bonded carbon atoms behind on the paper. It is only these weak dispersion forces that you are breaking.